What's up guys, this is Fedor and this video I'm super excited to bring to you because I want to answer one of the most asked questions. Can you still make money in poker? And my answer is yes, you can, but. I will expand on the but and share where I think the best spots are, some success stories and um, yeah, how to make money in poker. Two things we need to differentiate really big time is first, online poker, second, live poker. Two very, very different aspects. But I will expand more on these different areas. Let's start with online poker. Can you still make money in online poker? Is online poker dead? The answer is no. Online poker is not dead. The environment changed, things changed, but things changed much less than I thought. So when I played my most volume in online, it was 2014, 2015. Then I took a break, 17, 18, 19, and then I started getting back into it in 2020. And there were two things that stood out to me. First, the game at the top changed more than I thought. The best 20 players got better than I thought in that time frame. And second, in the middle of the game, the game changed less than I thought. The best 20,000 players got less good than I thought. And that is actually, uh, I think, very interesting if you look at poker as a game, the environment, the online poker environment, but also the live poker environment. And I think for life it might be even more so true where the best probably got much, much better and the average didn't get so much better. And this is great news because I kind of always split online poker or generally poker in three different categories. Category one, you can make somewhere between zero and three thousand dollars per month you can make a living so to say with playing poker you know somewhere between 10 and 40k a year i would say generally it is quite easy to accomplish that the second category i see is the medium category where you make somewhere between 50 and 150k a year five to 12k a month this category i think is still pretty achievable compared to other areas and how to achieve that in other areas. And the third category, I call this the top pro category of making 200K or more a year. I think this is quite hard. And especially when it gets into the higher areas, making 500K or more a year in poker is really, really hard. It's a lot, a lot of work and it's probably easier. There's, there's quite some areas where I can think of where it's easier to achieve that. Breaking this down, there's also only a few people who do that. So I cannot name many people that in terms of expected value make more than half a million a year in poker. You need to be one of the best in your game. You need to have the games running, the traffic running. And then there's some exceptions where people get into really soft games, but that's more on the, I, I call it more on the lucky side of spectrum. But in terms of online poker, for example, making that amount in an in expected value year is really, 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 really difficult. And there's only a handful of players who achieve that. But on the lower spectrum and the middle spectrum, I think this path to first go from zero to actually making money with poker and to make 100, 150K with poker a year, that I think is quite achievable. And I always say that I think almost everyone can achieve that if you put in the time and if you approach it the right way. Because there, the mistakes the players make that you play against are still quite on the obvious spectrum. And there's a lot of information out there that pinpoint what these mistakes are. And it's more of a working towards that. So more and somewhat smart, but not very creative energy input. And if you do that, you get to that point. So if you put in the energy and if it's somewhat smartly invested, you will get to that point. I'm almost certain. I wanna show an example in online poker where we have taken people from exactly that point of making almost no money with poker or playing for fun to the point where they made millions with poker. And that means individually to that middle area where they make 100 to 200K, uh, maybe a bit more even with poker a year. And I wanna share how that mix looks and where that sweet spot is. And let's start with online poker. So in online poker, the best example I can make is our Grindhouse One. So we started this in August, 2020, we took a group of friends around Mario Mosberg and Roland Rokita, the Grindhouse One boys, the original Grindhouse, and 
we try to help them get on the road to making a living with poker or let's say becoming pros. And I think the path was really amazing to follow now because now we can look at the success of the past where it's one and a half years later and what was really incredible to see is how the setup changed. A, the commitment. So they freed up the space, they committed to poker to pursue it full-time or basically full-time. That was a big shift. And second was the focus on just consecutively working on the steps to get there. Some more, some less. So, and there you can see the degree as well. If you put in all the time and you really focus on the things that we identify to make the biggest shift, which is working with a strong group of people, putting in the time to study on your game on a regular basis, one, two hours a day with other players that you talk about, to have a strong community and to put in the time, you eventually get there. And this was really, really amazing to see because every single one of them kind of even saying the more they spent on it, the more they invested in themselves, also the more you could see it in the long-term success, but they all kind of made it. And that was really amazing to see. I think in these one and a half years, I want to pull up the graph here. They made, I think, three to three and a half million in caches or in profit. Uh, online combined over all of them. And that is an absolutely incredible result. There is one or two outliers in there, but I mean, that showcases already how much expected value they must have made in this time frame. That coming from playing low stakes, like maybe making two, three, four hundred K all combined a year to now making like three million combined a year, that I think is an incredible result, incredible success. Shout out to the boys. I couldn't be happier to have been part of that, to just even had a small impact on that because in the end I think they're responsible for their own success but it was incredible for me to be part of this and uh, to have uh, play a little role in this and uh, congratulations to them incredible feat. So now to talk about what that sweet spot is in terms of online poker the key ingredients it's very simple I mentioned it before number one you need to free up the time. We have lots of players who ask this. I, I think there isn't basically no shortcut or you make your life really, really hard if you just invest a limited amount of time. If you say, hey, I want to get to that level, but I only want to invest five hours a week, it's really, really, really difficult. You know, you can get okay, but even then, like with a limited amount, of time investment, it's just not gonna work. So the time investment, number one, if you wanna get to that level of, hey, I'm a pro or I'm good at poker, you need to invest time. And I'm talking thousands of hours. So a couple of years, a reasonable amount of time, that is the first substance. The second is the way of learning. It doesn't need to be much because nobody else is doing anything. Everyone else is lazy. The competition you play against is pretty lazy. So you don't need to do much, you just need to focus on the basics. Look at your statistics of play very fundamentally sound poker, proper open raising, like a generally proper preflop strategy. Fixing these things goes a long, long way. I've worked with a variety of different players. There's always one or two or three things that are fundamental that are off. You need to fix these things. So working through them, like really studying that and kind of looking at it, um, getting feedback from the outside, seeing what you do wrong. That's what Poker Code is for as well, is we try to give you that input on what you can do better, have someone better look at your statistics or your hands or the way of your play, and then slowly working away and working on that. And step by step until you're at a point where there's not very obvious things that you can improve. This, I would say, when there's not very obvious things you can improve, if I look at your statistics and I'm like, I can't find something immediately that you can do better, I think you're already good enough to play mid to high stakes. <laughs> I basically always made the same experience. When there's fundamental mistakes, then you maybe can dabble in low stakes. The moment you make no really fundamental mistakes, you can basically already play everything on mid stakes. I've seen this over and over again. So like working on the fundamentals is basically anything you need until that mid stage. Like if you fundamentally, and I'm really talking about proper preflop, like some understanding of flop c bidding strategies, what to defend in the big blind, what to three bet, like maybe some of these things are new to you. If you're playing low stakes, you kind of get an understanding of these things, just working on the very repetitive, simple things that make up the majority of the game and doing that well to a degree where there's not, there will always be improvements, but not very blatantly obvious improvements. And that is the second aspect is you just need to get that routine in, identifying the major mistakes you're making and then slowly fixing them. And that's what I've seen with the Grindhouse is 
They just fundamentally, they made fundamental mistakes in the beginning. They were too tight, they didn't three bed enough, they didn't understand C bedding ranges properly, they didn't understand what to barrel on the turn, and like some very fundamental things. And then they slowly improved these things in study sessions, reviewing with solvers, working with Odin, like reviewing among themselves, sharing their knowledge, and now they're much better. Their way of thinking is much stronger, their pre-flip fundamentals are much better, their post-flip fundamentals are much better. And just by that already, they're now good enough to play mid stakes and also play some selected high stakes. That is the key. So investing the time, fixing these fundamental leaks, working on them regularly, having these setups with like a study group or some friends you, you talk to or some routine yourself. These I would say are the two main things. And then the third is game selection. That also plays a really big role huge shift in what games you play. That's what I've realized. Like, I think a big shift for me going from mid to high stakes um, was I got better at game selecting. So the third point, very essential is playing the games. You have the highest win rates in playing the games where you learn the most. These aspects play a huge role in your progress as a player as well. If you constantly put yourself in bad spots, it's just not going to accumulate to a great success story. So that plays a big role because if you are on this level, there's actually a lot of things you can play that are possible to increase your volume of buy-ins and yet you're crushing. So for them, for example, it's a Cyprus series maybe. You know, some incredible, amazing events. They travel together. It's cheap to go there. They have no expenses or, or little expenses. And then there's a really good 5K and there's some really good cash game and there's a really good 1K side event. And identifying these spots or, or obviously WSOP Vegas, like hands down, one of the best series, but also Aussie Millions. Like there's a lot of spots you can identify where you can play a 5k buy-in that you're crushing where you have a good ROI that is a high buy-in but you're a mid stakes you know mid to high stakes online player and identifying that can you know bring your um, yearly uh, return or your um, your your yearly EV from 50k to 150k that setup is so fundamentally important because I see so many players who you know they don't think they may be good enough they don't push hard enough for that so I think getting to that sweet spot where I would say the sweet spot in online poker there is playing everything up to $500 buy-ins and selecting the softer, higher buy-ins. So when there's a big series like Scoop, Spring Festival, playing these bigger tournaments, like being able to beat a soft 10K online when there's you know a 5 million guarantee or a 10 million guarantee, this should be your goal. You don't need to play the regular tough 5Ks, but like play up to the regular 500s, select the soft 1Ks, the soft 2Ks, the soft 5Ks, this is where you should be, I think, in terms of online. And in terms of live, additionally, play everything up to the softer 10Ks. You don't need to dabble in, in 25Ks, you know, 50Ks. This is not necessary, but like you need to be able to play and, and crush the main event, Aussie Millions main event, or an EPT high roller that has a great field. These are the tournaments you want to be able to beat because that will really bolster, like this you will actually make money with. You know, there, let's say you have a 20% ROI, boom, 2K EV. Like this is, this is a lot of money for one tournament. So that I would say is the absolute sweet spot for an online player. And I really believe that relatively it's quite easy to get there. So I think in a time span of two years with some background knowledge, you can make it to that point if you have a good crew of people. And I think the Grindhouse one showed that it's possible to go from absolute low stakes to playing these type of tournaments if you have a good group, if you invest the time, and if you study smart. So that much to online poker, the sweet spot I see. I just wanna highlight, I talked a bit about live poker, live cash games, I'm less familiar with those, but I also think, and I know a lot of players who are still making money in live cash games, live cash games, the third aspect of game selection is, I mean, incredibly important. Absolutely important, you win rate in the games you play, what rake the games take, how deep the game is, if you have position on the more recreational players, super, super essential. What I've seen in general, people in live cash gyms still play absolutely terrible. Even the regulars play 510, 1025. No real understanding of multi-way pods, what to see, see betting different sizings. Like I'm personally not a great cash game player. Like I'm way too loose preflop, I know that. I just love playing, I don't like the tight game of cash games. I think it kind of ruins the game. But nevertheless, if you really focus on cash games and really want to play live games, there are some absolutely exciting games and you need to really look for them and then study that game. Like understand the ranges of cash games live. That will have a huge impact on your game. 
if you just try to understand, like that would be the first thing I would be doing if I play a good life game is to really study for that. And I still see that even the regulars make big mistakes. So there's a lot of edge in life games to be gained. Certainly not dead. Life poker is 100% not dead. I think it will also never die. Life tournaments are amazing. There's incredible spots for life cash game. Hundreds of people who have showed that it's possible to, to win money in games. Thousands of people across online and live poker and still come up and still show that it's possible. So my resume is poker is not dead. Online poker is not dead. Live poker is not dead. There's still hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table. It's just up to you to grab them, put in the smart energy, focus on it. If you love poker and if you really want to get it, it's possible. Just commit to it. Make sure that your surrounding supports it. Don't take unnecessary risks for it, but it's certainly possible. And if you commit your time and um, your energy smartly, it is achievable. That's my take on the current live and online poker scene. And I believe it's not that and it's possible to make and win money in it. If you like this type of content, I would really love if you subscribe to the channel. It motivates me to continue putting out great content and uh, I love to see you guys the next time. I'm Fedor, cheers, have a wonderful weekend, bye bye. <laughs>